pancake swap is interesting because it offers almost 100% annual yield. Market cap per total value locked is only half that of Uniswap. Transactions from PancakeSwap on BSE is more than the entire Ethereum network. You should put the sugar first. Look, I'm in the middle of something here. I'm trying to record a video. Thank you, thank you. Fees are one hundredth of Uniswap on Ethereum, making it a much cheaper option. Is there a discount? Well, it's two factors. Gas price is only 5 GUE on BSE versus 100 plus GUE on Ethereum. And then price of 1 BNB is roughly one fifth of Ethereum. The first round was definitely won by PancakeSwap. Uniswap V3 with optimism. Ethereum Layer 2 will definitely make an interesting rematch. But as of today, those 100% are still there. 100%? Yeah. Per year? That's double. Yeah. Okay. You can put in my money. You need tokens. It's a digital currency. You still need tokens. Yes, I have those Binance money. You do? Yes, they were very expensive. I paid $10. You bought BNB at $10. That's as good as my technical analysis. No, for 100 Yes, I paid $10 for the 100 of those BNB coins in that ICO. You bought BNB at $0.10. Cents. Yes, very expensive. But they're worth $500 now. You're up 5,000 times. You and your pretend money. Can I make 100% or not? Why don't I show you with three of your BNB? Okay. So now we have received an account with three BNB in it. Before we start, this is not financial advice. For example, this would probably have realized capital gains tax for on to here for exceeding the farming revenues. In your real case, take help from a licensed financial advisor in your jurisdiction who can take your specific situation into account. I'm not that. Now let's see if we can make that 100% annual percentage yield for Auntie or not on this borrowed tutorial account. I will go real quick. You can play it back in 50% speed later if you want more time to follow the steps. First we add MetaMask to our Chrome as an extension. Make sure you get the right one. Then we create a wallet. We create a password. This is not the recovery seed. This is the recovery seed. Make sure to write it down on a piece of paper and don't lose it. Now we go to PancakeSwap. We connect MetaMask and MetaMask will actually automatically add the configuration. You don't need to do that manually anymore. As you can see, we're connected to Binance Smart Chain. Now we will withdraw three BNB from Auntie's account to our MetaMask. We copy the address to our MetaMask. Select Binance Smart Chain. We are already on BNB and three BNB. We can add the fee also so we get three BNB exactly to our MetaMask. All right, it's arrived. Let's start with the comparably safer with highest liquidity and that is cake to BNB farm. Then let's check the highest APR, highest annual percentage return. I have no idea what it is. I just quickly checked on CoinGecko and Twitter which, by the way, had different icons, not exactly trust building. Anyway, 500%, let's take it. If we try to add liquidity now, it's not going to work because the way that the liquidity pools work is that you have two coins of equal size and we have only one, right? So let's use one of our BNBs for the BNB cake liquidity pool. So we change half of a BNB into cake. All right, done. And now we can add liquidity. Make sure that there's enough coins of both types. Okay. And now you can see we have a liquidity pool here at the bottom. We have 1.958 of the pool tokens which give access to those cake and BNB. Now we can go back to the farm and stake those liquidity pool tokens. And you can see those 1.959 pool tokens are now staked and we start earning cake. Now let's go to the 500% pool DFTBUSD. Okay, so then we need those tokens. Let's take 100 DFD dollars and 100 BUSD dollars. If we go to BSC scan, we can see they have arrived in the wallet. Now we can add to that liquidity pool. And we see we got the pool tokens here. Let's stake them in the farm. Start farming cake. All right, they are staked and we'll start earning cake. Now let's go to the syrup pool. So what the syrup pool means is that you stake only one coin. You stake only the cake, for example. So let's use one BNB for that purpose 
and swap it to cake. Alright, we got those cake. And let's put them in the pool. Let's pour them in the syrup pool. And we see we have now a stake in the cake pool with an APR of 91%. Uh, no syrup, I don't like syrup. Swedish pancakes must have strawberries. Of course. You boy, you stop there. Now you explain it to me like I'm 85, which I am obviously not. But how can they give 100% return? You can't get 100% return with no risk for loss. Risks first, cake price down. You're still investing here, weighing risk versus reward. In the pools you get 100% more cake annualized, but we don't know if the price of cake will go up or down. Pancake burns. There's also the risk that pancake swap as a whole disappears, rug pulls with all your money. Now this is a flagship project of Binance, so I guess they would go to some extent to prevent that from happening, but still it's a separate entity. Farm rug pull. On the farm, if one of those coins go to zero, you will lose all the money. And on the high risk tokens, 100% isn't enough to take those trades. The market needs more. There is a substantial risk that one of those small projects disappear or dump in value. 500% annually is maybe 1% per day, but maybe I lose 100% tomorrow. Impermanent loss. There is also the concept of impermanent loss. You see the chart here. Once you deposit your two assets into the liquidity pool, you no longer own the assets. You own a share of the pool. Then if price changes, people will rebalance the pool. Then when you sell your share of the pool, you have a different number of tokens than what you deposited. That's the impermanent loss, which is very much permanent. The rewards then. More cake. The reward if taking on all those risks is almost 100% in cake or more in some forms. That's the trade. Cake price up. So far the cake pool has given way more than 100% because cake hasn't gone down, it has gone up by a lot. The return here has been in the thousands of percent, not 100%. My pension fund gives 1%. I like those 1000%. Mm -mm. We will come back to the technical analysis at the end of the video. You're still investing. This is a risk reward consideration. Now let's check on this account. Let's check the farm first. Oh look, we have earned 0.03 cake or 1.2 dollars. And here on the high risk farm we have earned 0.06 cake or 2.3 dollars. So this is in one day, meaning 24 hours later. And if we calculate that times 365, we see that it's actually 90%. Now let's harvest those. And there is a new feature here. You can press compound. Then those cake get reinvested. So you can get like interest on interest. Let's harvest our farm tokens now. Oh, so we harvest those cake. We harvest those cake. Max, take it out. Let's first unstake the syrup pool. Oh, we got the cake back. And on the forms under liquidity, we can see our two pools here. So press remove, max. Let's, let's remove the liquidity, get our coins back. Now we have removed all the liquidity. So we have our coins back, our BNB, our cake, our BUSD and the DFD coins and zero LP tokens because we have removed the liquidity. Now let's change it back then to BNB, which we started with. So let's take the cake first, we swap it back to BNB. Got some more BNBs here now. Let's take the BUSD max, swap it back to BNB, approve. And let's take the dangerous DFD, which I don't even know what it is. Will it still be worth something? Will we get our BNB back or not? Fail. Swap fail error. That is not what we wanted. Let's try again. Waiting, confirm. Oh, it worked. It worked. Pew. We got it back. We got out, guys. And look, we have now 3.1 BNB for onto, And everything else is empty. All right. While I recorded this, there was actually a lot of connection problems. I tried with different RPC providers. It was actually a mess. Now let's send it back to Auntie's account. Not bad. And it has arrived. So it worked! We made money for Auntie here! 
But as you see, the majority of the money was made because of cake went up from yesterday to today, not because of the pool or farm rewards. This is the plot twist, because this is typical for this type of market. The price development usually overshadows the APY yield, even if it's 100% or more. So maybe we're missing the point here. Let's look at the outlook of PancakeSwap as a whole. Fees. The key advantage now is the fees. Cheap on PancakeSwap as you saw, crazy expensive on Uniswap, locking out most retail investors and Auntie doesn't like it. That will change when Uniswap builds on layer 2 with optimism. Innovation. Uniswap V3 is adding a big innovation with concentrated liquidity. That will reduce slippage by a lot, which makes you get a better price if you trade large positions. Development. The first time PancakeSwap just forked the code. This time they can't do that because Uniswap got wiser and changed to a business license. No more open source free to use from all from Uniswap. Then PancakeSwap need to copy the idea instead of the code. Can they do that and how long would it take? I don't know. That's something we need to monitor. Tokenomics. PancakeSwap has a complex token issuance schedule. They mint new tokens, but they also burn them. The team says it will be deflationary. Hard to overlook. What we can say with certainty is that Uniswap is going to add a lot more tokens. Team, investors, advisors, community. Hmm. Team. PancakeSwap has an anonymous team. Uniswap is backed by a lot of US VCs, while running an exchange that's in my knowledge not so regulated by US authorities. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not from the US, I'm an engineer, but even I can see some risks with both approaches actually. Brand. PancakeSwap is whimsical with lotteries and games. Uniswap has made themselves a more serious profile for serious larger investors. I'm not much of a lottery person myself, but I can understand the appeal of both approaches. While I'm sharing this, please also share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe, of course. Decentralized. Then let's come to the most contested issue. But Binance Smart Chain is a centralized database and Ethereum is decentralized. God's work by the community. I see it like this. Yes, Ethereum is a lot more decentralized than BSE at this point. No doubt. But permissionless and decentralized are not the same thing. Those are two different use cases. And you have the answer in front of you. It's clear that there is demand for permissionless access to an exchange, even if it's less decentralized. Also, I think it's wrong to assume that even if something isn't perfect day one, BSE can't improve it. And Uniswap runs on a website by a VC-backed company. It can be shut down too. Capacity. Ethereum is full. That's why costs are so high on Uniswap. But is the Binance Smart Chain network also getting full? I struggle a little bit to find this answer, but eventually I found the answer from KTZW on Reddit. The current gas limit per block is 40 million. You can see that here. But that is a soft limit which increases if the previous block is almost full. But then the gas limit will revert back. There are draft proposals apparently to increase the gas ceiling to 60 million. That's 24 times the throughput of Ethereum, not 100 times or 1000 times. In the end, layer 2 is needed. If Ethereum layer 2 works, BEC is going to need it also to keep up. Are they working on that? I don't know, but we better keep a track. Flip. Can PancakeSwap flip Uniswap? Anything is possible, guys. Everything in global technology seems impossible until it happens. Don't be so sure of your opinion. Be open to anything. Uniswap will for sure have a revival with optimism and a concentrated liquidity. But why do you have to choose? This is not religion, guys, or your partner. You can like more than one use case. It is okay. Dexes will no doubt be part of the future. At least be part of that industry movement somehow. But here is an important conclusion. If you have decided to hold the cake coin while it's in an uptrend, using this pool service is a no-brainer in my opinion. Because if PancakeSwap rug pulls and shuts down the whole project, the token will drop 99% anyway. So having it on an exchange just means that you're missing the yield. We have one more thing. What about the technical analysis? Where are we right now? 
Let's start with the KQSD chart and let's go back to January because Lars Online flipped gold around here and then there was actually a dip right after that which gave you an entry and an uptrend if you were looking to get in. Then you can see this resistance line broke through and flipped support, retested support multiple times and then blast off. Then found new support, broke through this resistance and retested that resistance flipped support one more time. Textbook chart. Even more interesting I think is looking at cake versus BNB because that's really the ecosystem it is playing in. And you can see the trend is up even there and look here what well defined support resistance line we have. So here is support, uh, touch resistance, down to support again. Should it break through close above that that is a strong signal. And actually after I recorded that segment it broke through and on the USD chart it already hit $40. It's too little sugar. Next time you put more and first. Mm. Subscribe, watch the next video. See you all out. Hello. Okay.